Okay, we're live. Um, so first of all, let's just go ahead and introduce ourselves, Gray. You go ahead and go first. What's going on? My name is Gray Pittman, and this is Crown Cinema. And to my right, this is Kate Harvey. What's up, y'all? So the idea of this podcast is me and Gray are going to go watch a movie. We'll come back down, sit here, click record, and start to talk about it. And so for this first episode, we just watched Air, the movie about the deal with Michael Jordan. Air. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck directed yep. by Ben Affleck. Yep. Got to say Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, two like big like inspirations for one to get in this kind of industry. They've done a lot together too. I know. Goodwill Hunting. I mean, that's the dream right there. Yep. Writing a whole movie together and then acting in it and then boom, it's just one of the greatest movies ever made. Uh, what would you think about this one? I love these kinds of movies. Obviously, I'm a big sports guy. Lakers are playing the Warriors in like 15 minutes. Um, I love these kinds of movies because they just reflect on how big culture is, not just through sports, but just through everything. This movie highlighted like good music during that time. I mean, it was showing just like kind of the the style of everything and obviously sports at the time, you know, it was definitely like a Converse and Adidas run country or just market, I guess. I liked how they mentioned that Adidas is run, was run by Nazis. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. And Adidas was a Nazi company. Yeah. No, that was, uh, I'll tell you what, I really, I didn't know that really going into, I swear I didn't. And then yeah. like, it's just like kind of the funny thing, Matt Damon, uh, just talking to Michael Jordan's, agent and uh was, he's like he wasn't at, like everybody has their past and matt damon says well everybody has a past but there's a big difference between having a past and being a nazi <laughs> yeah yeah and i was like yeah there, there is a big difference there i wonder if michael jordan because in the movie michael jordan's parents travel to uh nuremberg what's it called so it sounds like that nuremberg but that's like where the Nazis were. Really? That's like a hub. You'll they have, have to the, check me. I'll, I'll definitely have to do my research because I didn't know any of this. So I wonder if his parents actually went to Germany to talk with those people That'd who are pretty, the, like, they're pretty the, wild. The, the, Cause they had the Adidas owner or founder who was the Nazi. He just recently died. So all mm -hmm. those people are his family. Yeah. Sons. Yeah. There's definitely sons and daughters. Like in the <laughs> So they're all um, descendants of Nazis running yeah. this company again you know what if the movie had been longer they probably would have like gone into it more which but i'm I'm glad they didn't they really just focused on like how nike like pretty much just in, th in those uh like three days how much like work they put in and how much of a risk it was to get michael jordan so that's one thing that i really you know i just enjoy about this movie it really is it's only an hour and 52 minutes but i mean you're into it from like the first scene to the end um there you know it wasn't too corny i really didn't i didn't think like there were too many corny scenes yeah i thought they did okay with trying to give people the facts so they could understand yeah the facts about basketball and the story behind nike not being a successful company before they signed michael jordan and how it was kind of like a laughing stock of that era because i've heard my dad talk about how back then nike wasn't cool yeah. like it is now nike yeah. was not a cool brand no it's like uh how Chris Tucker puts it, he was like, man, it's just people run it. Like, nobody runs. Like, everybody wants to do other shit. And so I like that. Um, especially he's just talking about, like, <clears throat> Michael Jordan being an 18-year-old kid. Like, black kid. Like, he's all about just seeing, like, what his idols are doing. Like, he doesn't want to see or he doesn't want to be represented by a brand that, like, all it is is just white people running. And so, like, that's why it wasn't doing so good. It wasn't cool. Adidas was cool. They had <clears throat> cool shoes. Nike cool, just cool had Cool jackets. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder w why they didn't have Michael Jordan really be... He was in the movie, but he really wasn't. I thought it was interesting. But, again, I mean, you know, it makes sense. Because, like, an 18-year-old at that time, like, he's going to listen to what mom and dad really have to say. And so, like, obviously, like, he's still... His parents are going to like actually take serious like business propositions and stuff like that more maturely than Michael Jordan. Like his mom says at one point in the movie, this isn't a spoiler, 
like Michael Jordan's big thing is he wants this red Mercedes. Like he wants an offer and he wants this red Mercedes like convertible or whatever it is. And his mom says like, you know, Michael Jordan, all he wants is this $250,000 offer and a red Mercedes that he's not going to care about in a year. I really wonder if that deal was really mainly with the, obviously the Nike was heavily involved in it. And I wonder if it was really just his parents. I wonder if Michael Jordan really had no say in it. I mean, he's got to have some say. Some in say. It. He's got to agree and sign. He's got to sign. But I wonder if his parents were the ones that were really pushing for it all. And they were the ones that were involved in this deal. That's why Michael, I wonder if it, I want to trying to ask is I wonder if it was a curious or not a curious, a creative decision or if it was something that Michael Jordan didn't want. Maybe he didn't want to be in the movie. Maybe there's some agreements or something. I wonder if that's the issue there. Yeah. Again, you know, we'd probably have to do like, like research just to see like how they went about making this movie. Cause I wouldn't be surprised if like Michael Jordan was just like, you know, like honestly, like I didn't really do much in those meetings. Like I was just 18 years old. I just wanted like to see if the stuff they were going to give me was cool, uh, how much money I was going to make. Like I wouldn't be surprised. And then like the, him telling like Ben Affleck or whoever he talked to about the movie, maybe they heard that and they were like, whoa, like how cool would that be to do like this movie about the creation of Michael Jordan's like brand essentially. And like, he's really not even in the movie cause he's just a kid. But it, it was very obvious that he had they, two lines. And, but they, they didn't. You never saw his face. No, you never see his like, face. Like they very intentionally never showed his face. Like people yeah. covered his face. He'd always turned around. They just show yeah. like blurry back shots of him walking. He had two lines, and the first one he sounded like a dumb kid. Like, do you remember what it was? No. They show the shoe. You know, it's red, white, and black. <laughs> Michael Jordan says. Chicago Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Chicago Bulls colors. <laughs> he just like, he points out his Chicago Bulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, that's the only thing he said. So I bet MJ was like, okay, wait a minute. Like whenever he saw the movie, I'm like, wait a minute. I said way more than Chicago Bulls. Like, <laughs> Yeah, you think he's, I just, I'm so curious on why they didn't show him. It's strange that he they I like blatantly it. didn't show his face. I, I guess it, yeah. it could make sense because... It's not about they didn't maybe they didn't want to make the movie about Michael Jordan. It's about the deal. And if Michael Jordan's in the movie, he will steal the show because people want to know. They they'll think it's a Michael Jordan movie. It definitely was about not, the deal. It's not a Michael Jordan movie. It's about the sh it's about Nike. Hey, had me fooled. I'll tell you what. I definitely I didn't know about that fact until first off Sunday with Scott Scott Jordan, who I assume might make his way onto one of these podcasts one day. He's part of Crown. Scott's telling me that he heard from a friend, like, yeah, like, I heard Michael Jordan, like, isn't even in the movie. And Scott was like, why would the real Michael Jordan be in the biopic about Michael Jordan? And so I was, like, laughing about that. And then you were like, no, like, there's not even an actor. Like, there's not the character Michael Jordan. And that, like, I didn't know that until, like, five minutes until we walked in the theater. I, we didn't stay long enough to watch the credits. We kind of dipped out right after it. But yeah. I wonder if he was even credited because when I look at the cast, I'll, before we watched it, I was looking at the cast and Michael Jordan, there's no character listed for Michael Jordan. You don't know who that actor is. I wonder if that... Yeah, there's got to be something because, I mean, those lines were spoken by somebody. There's a body, but, I mean, yeah, obviously he was not a main character. Like I said, two lines, Chicago Bulls and, and hello. hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, that was it. That's interesting. I wonder why they did that. I, you know, like, like you said, honestly, I think that's all it is. Like they just did it to highlight the behind the scenes, like the work and creation and like how much they really did believe in Michael Jordan. Cause like they were right. That's why they're, that's why the movie got made. Like it yep. was a crazy bet to do that on some rookie in a sport that while it was popular, it wasn't like totally like the future, you know, now the NBA, it's, you know, one of the biggest or one of the most watched sports, like of all sports right now. Yep. And so like it ended up being way bigger than what people thought it would be and way cooler. And just, there's just so much culture in the NBA. Yep. And like, it all started pretty much there. Yep. I, I thought the writers of the movie, whoever wrote it, they did a good job not making it corny with having to state the facts. Yeah. They, I felt I felt maybe they lacked a little bit with 
they didn't really write the risk that well, I thought, because they just a little excerpt about the yeah. the dude Rob Strauss, I think his name was, uh, Jason Bateman's character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and like how he could be it's fired so, and not see his daughter. Anymore. Yeah, I was like, okay, well, we don't really care about that. Yeah, like, we, what we does got, this mean for Nike if this doesn't work? Yeah, the risk wasn't there. wasn't really much risk. We, I felt like they could have made that a little bit better because. The, the only real risk that they wrote in was that this guy was going to lose his daughter. Yeah. Which is a, or cool Matt Damon's character like is just going to have a hard time finding a job. Yeah, and it's like, okay, but do we really care? We also yeah. know how it's going to turn out, so maybe, you know. Yeah, but like, I agree. No, I, I do agree. I think the only thing they really said about like what Nike would do if this didn't work out is uh, Ben Affleck, the CEO, playing the CEO, uh, says like he'll lay off the entire basketball department, which is terrible. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But I wish he had been like, not only am I going to have to like lay off the entire basketball, like we're never going to like, if we miss some crazy opportunity like this again, like we're going to be so far behind Adidas and Converse, like going to the future, something like that, which does make sense, but it was left unsaid, I think. Yep. Just, yeah. I also enjoyed how they, or I like the writing aspect of how they told in the beginning. I thought they set up Matt Damon's character pretty well because <laughs> he's they for the first thing that they showed him and he's in a casino. Yeah. And, and he hits his parlay. He hits his basketball wins. Yeah. He loses at craps. So now you kind of know, okay, this guy likes to gamble. Oh damn. I he doesn't win that. all the time. Doesn't lose all the time. He's kind of just 50 50. So yeah, you can kind of put your faith in him a little bit. Cause he, he may hit on the Michael Jordan. He may not. Because he likes to gamble and he wins sometimes, but, loses sometimes. Yeah, think about that. Think about that, though. Like, when he's doing the basketball parlay, which is this is the opening scene, like, he is confident in everything. He didn't even second-guess himself. At one point, I guess he kind of did. He, he was asking about some player, like, hitting, like, w- like what's the over-under? And he was like, you know what? Never mind. It doesn't matter. Just take the under. And it shows him going back, gets his money. He's cool, whatever. Then he goes to the craps. But, like, he hits... And then he doesn't hit, and then he's like unsure of like what to do after that. And so like that that was like, it was good to show in his character yeah. in the first scene because that was good symbolism. You know, like he knows like he doesn't second guess himself in basketball. Yeah, he knows his basketball. Yeah, I mean the dude's job was to study basketball and just recruit yeah. talent. Yeah, he just kind of they just hope that he could pick good people. I wonder if that's true about the uh, the annual like high school game. You know, because that's still like a I'm big sure. thing today. But he'll never get the credit for it. So I guess he probably just like told like Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, like, yeah, by the way, you know, I also came up with like annual high school, like all star games. And they're like, oh, we never heard about that. He's like, yeah, nobody did, but that was me. I've heard that this, I heard something that relates to that. It was, you know, who David Goggins is? Yeah. Yeah. He was talking about how the people that, like he was talking, he was talking about TikTok dances. He's like the first person that does the TikTok dance, they don't get the credit. It's the second person that did it that, that, that let everybody else know it was okay to do it. That person gets the credit. So similar to the basketball thing, Nike wasn't cool enough to make it the staple, but yeah. then whoever was the second, maybe Adidas, whoever had the second high school open, they Probably did it, Adidas. and then everybody else did it, and they all everybody else copied Adidas. Yeah, they didn't copy Nike. Adidas, let's just I don't know who it was, but let's just say Adidas did it. Adidas copied Nike for the basketball games, and then the rest of them copied Adidas, mm-hmm. which is, you know, that's interesting. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Again, you know, it's just, it's an hour. We'll just call it two hours, but it's quick. It's to the point. I mean, there's good, like, character development. Like, you know, it's like Matt Damon is just like this basketball guru in like a very underdeveloped basketball department i mean at the first meeting he's like asking guys like oh like what do you like about his uh gameplay and the guy's like oh he's uh he's a he's a good passer and matt Damon's like he had 33 assists last season which is terrible yeah and then he's like okay like what are you an asshole and then he goes to a gas station and picks up a couple like magazines from a gas station clerk, and the guy knows more than his office. Mm-hmm. So I like that they were like showing like, okay, like, I mean, what piece of shit team does Matt Damon really have? So I felt they did a good job making 
the movie interesting while you also knew everything that was going to happen. Pretty much. You didn't know the details and how things would flow exactly, but you knew, you know what the shoe looks like. You know what they're going to call it. You yeah. know they're going to sign with Nike. You know that Michael Jordan's going to get the deal. Yeah. You know all these facts because it's, it's a biopic, right? So you know all the facts. But it kept it interesting, which is cool. They didn't reveal the shoe too soon. Um, they developed the ideas that felt natural, didn't feel like it was forced because sometimes it's hard to... Because you, you have to make the characters realize, have a th- new thought about, we're going to call it the shoe Air Jordan. Yeah. Or let's make more red. You have to make them kind of re- like come up with the yeah, better idea. Yeah, that's crazy. I, you know, I'd never heard about that. I, f- I feel like I did hear about it, but I was reminded on that yeah. in that movie, which is cool. Paying $5,000 fine just so that your shoe, shoe I looks wonder, cool. I wonder, because like Ben Affleck's character, the CEO... He like, it. It's the meeting. It's the meeting with Michael Jordan, and after, like, they okay. So Ben Affleck like shows in late for like a strategy or whatever, and then Matt Damon's character like tells Michael Jordan he's like, "We're gonna pay the fine every game." I wonder if that truly is like the first time the CEO had like heard that. Yeah, because he was just like, "You can't say like, whoa, what? Like, what'd you just say?" Because they got MJ in the room now. You know, so oh, how eighty two games yeah, minus I, playoffs? Yeah. So five grand <laughs> times eighty two. Hey, how but, much is that? But but get this, he had also just walked in there and been like, Oh, we're a billion dollar company, I got a lot going on now. Yeah, right. So it's like you can't start tripping about five grand a game. Let's see. Eighty two times five thousand. Yeah, see that's like, another half a million dollars damn near. Yeah. To pay him. Yeah. But right. But shit, they made two hundred million dollars the first year. Yeah, it worked out. Worked out. It worked out. But it is funny. Like you can't announce we're a billion dollar company and then start tripping about like four hundred grand. Well, it's a gamble because in business you don't know that Michael Jordan could tear his knee. He could, you know, you never know what could happen. He could be an ass player. He Absolutely. Could, he could suck. So that's a gamble. Absolutely. But they but had already course. they already knew what they were going to offer MJ. You know. So, like, the CEO, like, just knew. is like, well, I mean, we're already fucked. If this 250000 like, what's another four hundred grand? Like, we would already be done for. I guess you're right. That's what I was thinking about. I wonder if the business deal was a little bit easier in real life to make happen because it does just make sense if they're going to... If they do decide to bet fully on Michael Jordan, then it's like, okay, well, fuck it. Like, Mike, yeah. <laughs> like we'll ben just Affleck's, give him whatever. Like, like Ben Affleck said, like, after being hard-ass the whole movie... Matt Damon's like, you know, he also wants like a share of every suit or every shoe with his name on it sold. And then Affleck just looks at him. He's like, fuck it. All right. <laughs> yeah. like, whatever at this point, like whatever this kid wants, like we're obviously just riding on this. And we literally just named the shoe after this kid. that's never played basketball. Pretty amazing. It definitely was. The story was really good. Um, I, I mean, thought it was a slightly above average biopic because it made you get excited you had some good feelings as you watched it hearing and watching michael that sequence at the end when matt damon's giving that speech to michael jordan and you're seeing the the flashes through history as he's just like telling him like the prophecy what's about to happen yeah, to he's you he's like this is exactly how it's gonna go like, yeah seeing that's cool you know it made you feel good it was a good a bit over dramatic but that probably didn't happen but yeah it was a good scene but i bet that he i mean i'm sure he must he had to have given him a crazy ass speech so, you know, who knows? Maybe it was something like that. It's definitely, uh, if I wasn't a basketball fan, don't know if I would have enjoyed it enough, but if you're a basketball fan, it's a fun movie to watch because you're like... No doubt. It's just yeah. a cool to see. Because I I mean, I got Jordans on right now. It's yeah. it's cool to see the I got, history I got, of how it was made. I got my Nikes. Represent. They're a little, they're a little dirty. But, uh, yeah, for sure. Like I said, Lakers play. Actually, I think they're playing right now. And I'm just... That's just the thing, like I was telling you earlier, like, I just love sports. I think they're just such a big part of our culture. They bring, like, everybody together in films, music, style, just all of it, like, combined, like, and then you put that into a movie, and, I mean, it just gets me going, so. Have you seen that they're remaking White Men Can't Jump? I have. On Hulu with Jack Harlow? You know, I never really liked the original, so. It was a little too corny. It's just too corny for me. It is corny, but 
It's still good. It's a good corny, cheesy old movie. Maybe I'll it's have one to of those guilty movies. Like you just yeah. don't expect anything from it. Just kind of really, it. I expected it to be like funny. Nah, who did uh? What's his name? Who's uh? Who's the famous black filmmaker? What's his name? I don't know. You do know. What did he direct? A I lot. Um, name a movie. I just watched Straight Outta Compton. Did he direct that? No. Okay, because that guy's name is F. Gary Gray. He doesn't like Quentin Tarantino. Oh, he's a director? He's a filmmaker. He writes and directs. Dude, his name's on the tip of my tongue. If anybody's listening to this, it's probably annoying because you probably know who it is. Dude. Well, thank God we can edit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Of course, it shows the old one. Nope. He didn't make White Men Can't Jump. Okay, I was wrong. Okay. Pointless. You don't know... Ah, dude. He made uh, the the new movie... uh, it came on Netflix called The Five Bloods. It's no. the Vietnam movie Mm-mm. with the black dudes. Mm-mm. They go back, or they fought in Vietnam. They go back because they hid treasure. They like found gold. So the whole crew back in their like platoon who held who like hid the gold, they get together as old men to go try to find it so they can become rich. I heard about oh Spike Lee. Spike Lee, dude, is <laughs> Jesus, dude. I knew it was with an S. I kept wanting to say Stanley. I was like, that's not it. Spike Lee. Holy shit. Yes. Yeah, you could have just Lee. said Nick's from New York. Yeah, they, dude. I was blanking hard on everything. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. It's because I just watched Straight Outta Compton, and it, the director, like, his name is F. Gary Gray, and which is just nice. hilarious to me because. People call me Gary. So it just, they look like fuck Gary Gray. That's just been stuck <laughs> in my mind. But yeah, Spike, Spike Lee, dude. Yeah, that took way too long. Way too long. <laughs> Maybe I do need to edit that out. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, it's a good movie. Uh, I loved everything about it, obviously, except for the end. Matt Damon and Ben Affleck obviously have that old school bias to say that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player of all time. Spoiler, don't give a fuck though, because if you know sports, you already know the ending of this movie. So, yep. what can I really spoil? Um, um, I like the, I thought, Lakers, do you remember, baby. LeBron, do you remember the scene in the bar when Marlon Wayne's is, and he's telling him about the Martin Luther King yeah, speech? Yeah. I didn't fucking get to hear that part because a lady stood in front of me for, for like 30 seconds. Oh, really? You didn't see her? Because we were sitting in these no, chairs. I was watching that amazing scene. Dude, she's blocked my really view. Awesome. She blocked my view. For, the waitress blocked my view for way too long. I'm sitting. Oh, that sucks, dude. That was the best scene in the movie. Yeah, I know. You were saying something important. I was no, trying to listen. No, you don't know because you didn't see it. I, but I, I saw it. But I figured it probably was. I was listening to the first half and I clicked. I was explaining to her that our, our buttons didn't work because we were sitting at our seats and our little button to call the waitress to get some more water or popcorn or whatever it wasn't working. So I was just telling her, oh, I had to click the one next to us because... The, our buttons doesn't work she's like oh okay standing in front of me as i'm trying to watch the movie and it's like clicking the button multiple times and she's like oh okay i'll tell the manager I'm like okay thanks she's like that, is that that everything i'm like yes oh, and she leaves damn dude and then the scene was over damn yeah you may as well just not even watch the movie if you right? missed that scene yep yeah it's incredible it's incredible he pretty much was like telling matt damon's character like everybody has their own voice, like telling them, like, "Hey, like, wait," or "Hey, like, take that risk," and like his voice was telling him, like, "I was listening to a bunch of people give speeches, and like they were all just like kind of mediocre." And then he was like, "But I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it out. I'll watch like all of them." And then boom, M O K was the last speaker and gives his "I have a dream" speech, but he reveals that. MLK only wrote like the first half and then pretty much improvised the second half. And then he's like, Hey, like I love that speech. Like that was incredible. That was the best speech ever. And MLK gave him the speech. And that was real. Yeah. At which the end of the movie, I, it obviously that that actually I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Like whenever I was like watching that scene and he was explaining, I was like, okay, that might be like a tad bit over dramatic. You've seen, you've seen a uh, hateful eight. 
Yeah, it's like, like it's with like Samuel what? Jackson with Abraham Lincoln's <laughs> yeah. letter, and it's not real. Exactly, but like you know, he didn't say that. He, right. Well, I mean, he did make the joke. He was like, "Yeah, you should see the letter I have from Abe Lincoln." Too. Yeah, that was good. But then, like in the end credits, when they're like giving credit to like everybody that was like uh, characterized in the movie, they say that same guy, not the actor, but like the character it's based off of, has been offered a maximum of like three million dollars for that speech and he refused it so he's definitely not lying yeah dude you should definitely hold on to that well i'm, I mean, gonna, I'm gonna look it up I'm it's gotta be real up. they put it at the end of the credit that'd be stupid if they didn't if it wasn't real and they just put it at in the end of the movie hey, it's just a movie you know? but so what i was saying about that scene is i like i thought it the shots were interesting i never seen a a conversation shot like that they seem like they're focused if you notice their focus pool was like it would get blurry on him like they would like like focus on the drink like the beer it would focus on like his side like because if i'm sit, if i'm sitting like this and the camera's over my shoulder it was it would focus on my face here which normally doesn't happen well i thought it was an interesting way to do it ben affleck directed by him i wonder who the cinematographer was i don't know i don't really know many cinematographers if i'm gonna be honest yeah, yeah you better than me. Do I do I know any? Yeah, Roger Wait. Deakins, the greatest of all time. The Dune, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me see. That might yeah. not be true. He definitely did. Hey, Blade. Okay. He did a lot. He's done a lot. He did a Blade Runner, mm. 1917, Prisoners, Sicario, No Country for Old Men. Okay. Yeah, that guy's good. Fargo. He's good. Skyfall. Got it. Hail Caesar. True Grit. I. Rango. I swear to God, I got it. Big Lebowski. Shawshank Redemption. He's been around a while. Has indeed been around a while. That's a that's a fucking killer resume. Yeah, that is like all time Hall of Fame. That one would say he's the LeBron James of cinematography. Well. That would be disrespectful. We don't have to do this. God, we don't have to do this. What would you rate the movie? Um, I'll give it a solid. I'm gonna my rating score is gonna be harsh, so I'm not gonna give. So I'm gonna give it a. Six point eight. I give it a seven and a half. Yeah, really? right. you're focused. You're into it. It's not too long. It's not too short. They explain some good stuff. You get good character development. It's a cool story. Um, everybody definitely just knows the story. Like Michael Jordan signing with Air Jordan was a big deal. It was monumental. But nobody really knows exactly how it went down. So, yeah, I'll give it a seven and a half. I was into it like the whole time pretty much. Like we were laughing. Um, I definitely like got goosebumps at some points. So yeah, I thought maybe a seven and a half. I was thinking maybe a seven, but I'm I'm gonna go a little less than a seven. Yeah, I, I think it was good, but it wasn't anything amazing. It wasn't anything amazing, but it is a fun movie to watch. I'm definitely excited for this Lakers Warriors game, and just being a sports fan in general, it definitely like got me amped up. So yeah, you know, I think seven and a half is fair. Yeah, it was. I'll give it a seven. I'll bump my score up to a seven. I thought I think a seven's. Yeah. A seven's good. Seven just says like, hey, you know, it's not it's not a waste of your time, but it's nothing crazy. It's interesting that Amazon made this movie. Amazon Studios. Oh yeah, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> that had, guy. Well, okay, I'll tell you what. When you watch this movie, they get you with that intro song, <laughs> "Money for Nothing." <laughs> Me and Kate are just bat, looking dude. at each other. We're like. Pretty solid intro song. Yeah, no, I mean you can never go wrong with anything like that. I mean, it's good. I wonder. It's good. How? Let's see. Guess. Uh, how much money do you think Nike paid Amazon to make this movie? Let's look at the budget, and we'll see their percentage. All right, the Air movie budget was. Oh shit. 70 to 90 million. So they probably paid him like 150 million. 
No. Do I know anything? No, their budget know. was seventy to ninety million dollars. They made the movie with with seventy, 70 to ninety oh. million. So how much do you think? How much of that money do you think Nike paid for this movie? Because Nike had to have sponsored it. Yeah. Right. That's I how. don't. I mean, just guess. I don't know shit about this. Me uh, neither. <laughs> that's why, like, I just said 150 million. Okay. Or maybe just like 120 million. No, they can't pay more than the budget. If they paid 90 million dollars, if they made the movie for 90 million, so Nike, then they okay 90 million. Do you think they pay for the entire movie? Well, if it was between 70 and 90, and they saved 20 million, it's pretty good. No. I think you're not understanding my question. Maybe I don't. I'm asking. Air was made for ninety million dollars. They, yes. The entire movie cost ninety million. Yes. How much of that did Nike pay Amazon Studios to make it? Is what I'm what I'm curious. What your guess is? I don't know if they disclosed that. To be honest, I don't know if we can find that. I was about to say, yeah. I bet it was at least. You probably got to go deep into the contract. At least probably got to be like fifty million dollars, because dude. How many 50 people? million? Yes. That's more than half. Of, think about every, people invest in these movies. There's a lot of different revenue sources that get put in this to make it. All right, yeah, probably. Damn, they made that movie. That movie did not look like it was that high of a budget. I mean, that's a middle, that's a mid uh, range budget for okay. a movie. Mid range, I think, is like 30 to 70. So it's a little bit higher than a mid-range movie because low-budget movie is like less than ten million. Mid-range budget, it's like maybe it's thirty to seventy. It's like a mid-range budget. I know there just wasn't like big budget is like hundred. It's not like they have like any special effects. Like they pulled a lot of clips like from the actors, dude. Oh man, yeah, Matt Damon's pretty expensive. Jason Bateman, Ben Affleck. And he's directing <laughs> the actors. <laughs> That's where the movie and advertisements, obviously, is a lot of it. Yeah, because they're really, you know, there wasn't anything special. I mean, it was all shot in what North Carolina and wherever Night Nike office. headquarters. Yeah, yeah, it was just uh, probably just film sets. Yeah, I mean, it was all pretty much taking place in the office. I mean, I guess they went to Vegas just to fuck around at the beginning. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't even go to Vegas to film that. Probably not. <laughs> but yeah. still, yeah, I mean... I, I'm damn. surprised it was only $90 million. I would have thought... Because usually for these movies, they try to... I would have... Just pump, would've, this, pump them up. You I would have thought less. But again, this wasn't like the most advertised movie. Yeah. Like the most marketed movie. I didn't I really didn't know, know it about in, it. That's wild. I knew about it, and I thought it was cool. But at the same time... I was like, oh, once that like comes out in the theaters, like I want to go see that immediately. That movie's been out in theaters since like April fifth. Oh, it's like a month. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, I looked it up because I was like, when is that air movie coming out in theaters? And I see it's been out like since April fifth, and I'm like, oh, okay. So like, boom, like, and I'm and I watch NBA basketball. You would expect that commercial to be like pumping in the NBA, but like, not really. The only reason I really remembered it was because Chris Tucker came on uh, TNT's halftime show with Shaq and them. And like and then I was like, oh, damn, I kind of forgot. And then they were like, Chris Tucker, like, Air was an incredible movie. Like, I was like, Chris Tucker's in this movie. What the fuck? And then April 5th, I was like, okay. Yeah, maybe that's why the movie wasn't a, you know, giant budget movie because, or maybe that's why we didn't see it. It's because they didn't have, like, hundreds of millions of dollars. Because... I'm sure to advertise on the NBA is a fucking fat price. No doubt. No doubt. I mean, millions, tens of millions of dollars to just have a commercial play yeah. in front of the NBA. Yeah, but that's surprising, isn't it? They didn't really advertise. Maybe they're hoping it was kind of advertise itself. Because I didn't maybe. see, I haven't, I mean, maybe I saw one commercial for it. And I didn't, it, I kind of, there was I no did. real huge advertisements. I think. I'm I'm pretty sure I saw it, like maybe in the beginning of the NBA playoffs, but like only twice, if that. And then other than that, it was just me like YouTubing it just to see like maybe extended trailers. It said it made uh, damn near eighty million. There you go. So they did good then. They either they probably broke even. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like they broke even. 
maybe they like got it like a little 10 million but that's know. that's the issue that we got to figure out how to solve cuz i've heard from people that do invest in movies that they don't make their money out of it they don't make their money back it's always like a break even deal or lose money or they don't the investors don't get paid out so if we can figure out a way you got to do the Quentin Tarantino route what's that low budget films that is the key dude I swear, dude, there's got to be a way to make a movie for less than $90 million. You're telling me you couldn't remake that movie for $90 million? That's what I'm saying. I'm I mean, surprised. for less than $90 million, Like 20 Like, okay, how much are you paying Ben Affleck? Probably $5 million. Oh, yeah, but then at the same time, like the whole Ben Affleck, Matt Damon duo, like everybody loves that duo. They think of Goodwill Hunting immediately and then directed by Ben Affleck. It's like, okay, fuck, like. And um, that's what they're paying. That's what they're paying for. Like you said, it's the actors: Jason Bateman, Chris Tucker. But that's not. I don't think they make ten million from a movie. I think it's probably a few million. Jason Bateman right now. He's probably he he counts for a lot. Everybody's a Jason Bateman fan right now. Yeah, but he but for a side character dude, he ain't making ten million dollars. Ben Affleck's make. He probably made maybe ten million because he directed it. Yeah, and act starred in. Not didn't star in it, but acted in it. We think Matt Damon made. Like, um, I don't know. Maybe like seven. I wonder if that's public information. If you can see how much people, how much money they made. How much did Matt Damon make in air? Holy shit, dude! The biggest he made thirty million dollars. Do you remember in Green Lights when Matthew said that his like highest pay was like ten? They offered him like ten million for that rom com when he was taking a hiatus from making romance movies. Ten million, bro. Thirty million dollars. That's why that movie <laughs> cost ninety million, bro. You paid this motherfucker thirty million for a movie. That's insane. Yeah, bro. I gotta say, I'm pretty shocked. I definitely, I was thinking like fifteen. So he makes an estimated ten million per movie. Okay, so I was wrong. He's yeah. Jason Bourne. Yeah, I guess so. He's a fucking <laughs> giant actor. Wow. Okay. Well, that's where the money goes. <laughs> $30 million for one dude to be in the movie. How much... Damn. All right. Let's see how much Ben Affleck made. All right. So we know Matt made thirty. That was the biggest they say he made in his career. The most money he's made in a single movie in his career. So what's your guess for old Benny? I mean, he's Batman. So. Yeah, he's made. He probably made a fuck ton from being Batman. Oh, he definitely made a bunch. Mm, I don't think it shows. Okay. They say he. They say he at least made ten million. Yeah, he's not the best Batman. No, <laughs> <laughs> kind of trash Batman. <laughs> you see, what's his name is back as Batman. Michael Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't seem like a Batman to me. I like, mean, nothing about him screams superhero. He's the OG Batman, so but I even can't then, say that because like, I remember growing up on that Batman. I don't but, think, I've never seen him in that Batman, but that's back when Batman was kind of goofy. Yeah. It wasn't cool like they try to make it now. Yeah. No, but, I'm not. I probably won't even see The Flash until I hear that Christian Bale's in it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that'd be cool. If they, get, if they somehow get his Batman that into it. That is a complete ripoff of Spider Man. Yeah. If they no, do that's that. what they're doing. Yeah. Dude, DC is just, what a, just the a only, The only thing they got right was Suicide Squad. That was the second one. <laughs> yeah, no, that was bad. Other than that, like, oh, I love the, the Batman was Suicide Squad. The Batman movie. was good, though. I like the Batman. With uh, Robert Pattinson. Yeah. That was a solid movie. Now they're doing uh, the Penguin, like, spinoff show, Colin yeah. Farrell. Yeah, I haven't seen the trailer for that, but I have seen oh, it. Was pretty, it was pretty cool. It was Hopefully pretty that's cool. good. But I hope they make a. I wish they let the Joker, because they're making they made the Joker, the Batman, the Penguin. They got to figure out how to put them together. Well, haven't you seen in like Robert Pattinson's The Batman? Haven't you seen the deleted Joker scene? Yes. Yeah, so they're not using Joaquin Phoenix's version. They could though. That's a small scene. Is after credits deleted scene. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, in Iron Man they changed. Uh, War Machine 
Yeah. Remember the first movie was a different guy. Mm-hmm. So they could always change it. There's they haven't made a full movie with them yet either. You can always change an actor. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta as long see, as I got to see the, the second beginning. Joker. What? Which one? The new Joaquin Phoenix one. They're making a new one. Yeah, they already had like have uh like pictures released of this like the film set. It's Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. Oh shit! And Lady Gaga's she's Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. Yeah. Damn, I did not see that. Yeah. Dude, they have to. There's not a trailer or anything, but like they're just like rumored. No, I mean it's it's happening. It's a thing, but like there's. No I think they've already like wrapped it up. They're just in uh, wow. production. But like there's like pictures of like Joaquin and Lady Gaga like on set like it's been filmed. I'm really. Cu- they've said they weren't, but I'm curious and if they will tie them together. The Batman, the Penguin, all of them. We'll see. I mean, obviously the Penguin. I mean, penguin's yes, the Penguin's the already tied in, but no, the big thing is to see if they're gonna tie in Joaquin and Robert. Because that Batman movie, dude, that was such a good movie. It was cool so if you got the me. patience for it. If you're a big, like, Batman fan, like a big, like... I don't even think so, dude. I think if you just don't even know the Batman, you could watch that movie and enjoy it. What do you, you thought it was slow? I thought it was slow, but I also liked the vision they went for that. Like, like they went for, like, finally Batman being, like, a detective. Like, not just yeah. a superhero. Like, and he's more gritty. Yeah, and, like, that was the Batman that I used to, like, always imagine. Yeah, I love the, I love the sound design on the fight scenes, which is how brutal his punches sound. Yeah, they just like break bone as he just waylays on people. That scene when he's with, I think it's the first time you see him fight. When he's in the shed, everybody's like the bat signals up in the air, and everybody's like looking at the shadows, scared. Yeah, and he comes out of the shadows because there's like those goons. Maybe it's the pain. I don't know who are those skull faced goons. I think those are just like Gotham. Yeah, all right. Like well, whoever weird, they were, yeah. Weird ass emo gang members. Right. Like they're when just he like their ass. Yeah. Those are just like the guys that you beat up in the like in the beginning of video games. <laughs> okay, well, the camera just died. Even though it's plugged in, that doesn't make any sense. That's okay. We started talking about or we stopped talking about air so long ago. That's okay. That was good. That all was right. good. You can wrap this up. Yeah. All right. There's the first episode of the Crown Cinema Podcast. Appreciate y'all watching. That was fun. We're out.